Hi, this is John, and today's project is replacing the timing belt and the balance shelf belt on this Porsche 944 Turbo S. It only has 30,000 miles on it, but it's been a while with the original belts, and uh, I thought it was time to uh, go ahead and replace them. This is really not a video to tell you exactly how to do that because there are a lot of other websites out there and videos. There's a Pelican Parts site that has a good step-by-step, -step, but all those sites seem to indicate that the crankshaft pulley comes right off and mine did not. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about getting that crankshaft pulley off and what I had to do, and then a little detail about tensioning the belts themselves. This is a view from under the car, and uh, this is the drive sprocket for the balance shaft belt and behind that is the drive sprocket for the timing belt which is still on here this is the problem getting this guy off of here uh, i've tried a couple different things i've come to the conclusion that we're going to have to take the fans out and in order to take the fans out this lower valance cover here you can see is going to have to come off the valance cover is off now Pretty, uh, pretty easy to get off. There were a couple of bolts here that were a little bit hard to, to get to that were holding up in here, kind of exposed to the little bit of water, a little rusty there. So uh, I used wire brush to clean the threads and then I used some PB blaster. But you can see here there's a number of screws around uh, that need to be removed and then the whole thing just comes right out. There was a, there's also a bracket here on the one side and on the other side of the radiator here. Um, I had another bracket over here that I, uh, that I had to undo, but otherwise it just comes right out. Um, next step is, you see the oil cooler here? Uh, we've got a line going to the oil cooler. The fans uh, are going to come out down below, and this is in the way. But these are the electrical connectors. I've already pulled those off. It was a little bit tricky. I had to pull kind of hard. I was a little bit concerned that uh, I was going to do some damage, but I kind of pulled and wiggled. First time they've probably ever been off since the car was new, uh, but they come right off this way, pulling down. I've removed the two bolts. So there was one here and one up in here. You can see where my finger is up there. Uh, and now that is that assembly is loose. You can see here, I can move it. The key there is really the ability to move this pipe here, this oil line out of the way to try to get the fan out. I've pulled the radiator hose here, uh, a little bit more drained out, so have a bucket ready when you're pulling that off. Um, I also pulled this brake duct out. There's just a few, there's a couple screws here holding it, uh, and then one in here, just to give myself a little bit more room. I don't know if you really need to do that or not. Um, then when it comes to the fan shroud here, there's six bolts total. There's three down here. Uh, three going across the top. There's that slot where the top bolt was. It's right about the center of the frame. There, you've got to get that one from below. Uh, the other two on either side you can get from either top or below. Below is a little bit tricky. Uh, you can get them probably more easily from the top. Um, next step then is to pull this uh, fan shroud out. Uh, with the two fans on it, we've already disconnected the uh, wire and laid that off to the side. So we should be able to raise that up a little bit, pull it out of the tray, and then slide it down. So with all the bolts out, the next step is to get these fans out of here. You can see they're loose. Um, so we're going to try this out here. We should be able to lift this up and get it out of here. There we go. They're a little bit heavy, so be careful. Uh, but there's enough play in the oil line to get them all out. Now that I've got the room, you can see I, pushed, I put a piece of poster board up in here just so I don't bump those uh, fins on the back side of the radiator. But now that I've got that fan shroud out, look, I can put my gear puller in there. So we're gonna see what happens here. Notice I put a little anti-seize compound on the threads and then also right here, I put the bolt back in so I've got something to push on uh, without the washer in there. So you can see how much shaft is protruding here. So I'm gonna start cranking and we'll see whether I get that uh, gear to come off. Okay, so here we go. And I'm seeing some success. I'm turning the, turning the screw here and I'm finding that 
we're getting some motion, finally. Uh, so, yeah, if you s struggled with the same thing I did here, uh, it's quite a relief when you actually start to get the thing to come off. So, I'm not going to show the rest of this, but uh, I'll be pulling this off and uh, check back in in a minute. Toothed gear off the crankshaft, finally, and now you can see... Uh, we can get right to the timing belt there, and that should be pretty easy to replace. A lot of videos out there on the web that show uh, how that's done, and uh, I'll check back in here when we get to tensioning the belt. Putting back the uh, drive sprocket for the balance shaft uh, belts, I basically just used the, the nut here and this um, kind of, it's, it's more than a washer, it's kind of this end piece. And using that, I was able to just push this right back on. But I'd recommend you've got to be pretty careful. Make sure that you get the key aligned with the keyway. And that's kind of above your head. You don't really see it. So uh, I used just a little bit of um, PB Blaster to uh, kind of allow some lubrication here on the end of the shaft. So I'm just unscrewing it. You can see. So it's on, but as I'm putting it on, I'm kind of rotating it just a little bit and just making sure that it's really going in on that, on that keyway properly. So that's important. I also tapped a little bit, just very, very lightly in here, just enough to get this thing through. Uh, and then I use the, the bolt here with this uh, end cap to, uh, it's just big enough so that the shaft uh, goes up into this little recess and allows you to pull the gear back onto the crankshaft. While you have the uh, valance cover off under here, one of the things you might do is uh, blow out the radiator. You can see on the front of that, actually that's the condenser we're seeing there, the radiator's right back there, but on the front there you can see an awful lot of junk. It's probably an easy uh, time to get to that and brush some of that junk out of there. Uh, I'm gonna blow the from the backside with compressed air and hopefully get a lot of that stuff off. This on the right is the new belt for the balance shafts, the old ones on the left, and notice the difference, they're definitely different widths. This is 15 and this is 18. Uh, at first I thought maybe it wouldn't work, but it turns out that I've got an 88944 Turbo S um, that it just fits just fine. So that's one thing that they've changed I think over time is the uh, width of the belt, but everything else is the same and it fits in the it fits in the system perfectly. This is the Porsche belt tensioner. Um, the dial gauge here tells you uh, in some kind of units what the tension's supposed to be. We're shooting for four. Um, notice this needle here is just a, a maximum needle. The one we're reading here is right there at the zero. Uh, tool comes with this calibration bar. It's just a piece of spring steel. The way you use it is you put this between the, the two fixed feet here and then you bring this one up until it locks and then you read it out on the needle. You can see it's at four. So this tells us that the device is calibrated and we're ready to set the belt tension. Point out a, a little tip when using this tensioning tool. See where I've written away on these guys here. Um, there was a time period when they were making these and that hole was not centered in there. And I'm not really sure if this tool is in that time period or not, but when you're using the calibration bar to set the calibration, you know, you just pick one way to do it and then just always keep those away. So when I'm putting it on the belt, you know, I'm making sure that this side is touching the belt and that is away from the belt. Same with the other one, because if they do get rotated, it, there's a potential that you could um, not be getting the same reading that you got with the calibration bar in place. The other thing you can kind of do is when you're sitting there uh, getting ready to put the tool on is you can kind of tap it a little bit to try to make sure you got the zero in the right spot and do that while you're holding it at the same angle you're going to put it onto the belt too. So that helps a little bit. And of course, you can rotate this outer dial here to to uh, get yourself back to zero, but you want to make sure that uh, that you kind of tap a little bit um, just to take out any stiction inside the inside the uh, the meter here. I've got the tension set. I set it once, and then I rotated the crankshaft uh, two times. 
So this came all the way around here again. Um, then I'm rechecking it and it looks pretty good. Actually, it was a little bit low first and now it comes back. Uh, one of the things you've got to do when you're checking the tension is you kind of iterate back and forth. So you put, you line the two marks up. They're not lined right now, but you line them up and that pulls on the top, loosens the bottom. So then you can set the tensioner a little easier. Then you kind of go back. You're supposed to go back 10 degrees of crankshaft. So it's only five degrees up here. And uh, there's 40 teeth. So it turns out to be just about a half a tooth that you go back. That's just really enough to, to kind of loosen this top belt and tighten the bottom part of it. Uh, and then you take your reading. And so I think I've gotten pretty close here. I'm pretty happy with this. So you can see it's just about a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit over 3.8. The spec is four plus or minus 0.3. So we're, we're on the low side, but we're well within the spec. I'm gonna leave it here and move on to the balance shaft belt. So now I'm adjusting the balance shaft belt. You really didn't need, if you've got one of these automatic tensors, you know, with the spring in there, you really don't need this tensioning tool for that belt, but you do for this belt. So on the uh, balance shaft belt, uh, you can see here, I was, uh, I was shooting for three and uh, pretty close. If you look down here, one of the key things is that little round cylinder part of the tool. You want that to be between the teeth. And once you put it on there, you can kind of slide the tool along the belt and you can see it'll go up either way you go. So that way you know you're in the valley. Um, and so you can see I was shooting for, for three and I'm pretty close to three there. Um, what I did was I left the tool on the belt, go down here, and then while you're watching the tool, you can uh, move this nut with just a little bit of tightness on the bolt. Just enough you can allow, you can move this uh, you can get these uh, these wrenches on eBay here, uh, and that's pretty handy to just rotate that while you're watching the die. Now that the belts are installed and tensioned properly, the rest of the job is just to replace everything the reverse of the way you took it out. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful.